how did you get into spoken word? Uh, you know, I, I always I always wrote a lot, you know, as a kid or even in high school. Um, when I got to college, I started going to open mics and just kind of, you know, reading my poetry, sharing my poetry. Um, and then afterwards, people would be like, man, that was spoken word, you know? And I was like, I hadn't even heard a spoken word. I was like, I guess it's words and I'm speaking it. That's kind of true. But I didn't really, you know, I didn't really embrace that title of, you know, doing spoken word or being a spoken word artist until kind of more recently. Um, because I, I had, you know, I do put a lot of thinking into, into writing as far as the voice and the rhythm of it. Um, and I also think there's just a lot of aspects about spoken word that I appreciate, you know, as far as being very social justice oriented, you know, community building, community empowerment. Like, there's a lot of things, you know, within the history of spoken word that I do want to affirm and, and do want to work towards and, you know, and consider, consider the work a, a spoken word art. I don't use play pens, my son runs in riots. He took his first steps towards burning buildings and he carried a Molotov cocktail in his right, dragging his blankie in the left grip tight. Half soft brush cotton, half tear stained satin, he lets the tail gather the dirt and screams of the street, he can't sleep without it. When I sing lullabies we are often running and he keeps up cause he loves the sound of twinkle twinkle little star to fire alarms. He thinks ashes are diamonds in the sky. I breastfed for a year, as recommended, and I weaned into household chemicals. We are only as strong as the bomb we mix, and my son's lungs glisten, listen. I don't want another language to be lost, so I whisper the traditions of tamed lions. I grip his wrist for his attention, and I purr the words. How we were told we could not be wild. I clench his shoulders and I hold him. And I told him they said we were not real lions. They said they were not real gatekeepers. They said the cage would not come between us. They said this was justice. And I swore for whatever mother this earth was supposed to be. And I said, baby, the truth is we are free. Unlike me, he didn't pause at the thought. My son stood up, sucked on a switchblade, and took off. He met men with gray hearts and silver badges, and he has bullets in his front. He has bullets in his back. He has 56 baton blows, six kicks to the ribs, and in the video, it's tough to tell whose son it is. 2010. All my children cry tear gas. Well, I think, I mean, I think everybody's identity really Im impacts their, their writing or their art, you know. I think we always take from our experiences and, and incorporate that into the things that we create. I think, you know, personally for me, you know, as, as a woman, as a woman of color, um, identity is something I'm faced with a lot. You know, every day you come in, you know, into, you know, personal experiences or things that are happening in the world that have to do with identity and my own identity. So I think I reflect on those things a lot. and. And those really show up in the topics that I write about. You know, that poem, My Son Runs in Riots, you know, that was about, that was about other, other men of color, other children, you know, who, who were victims of police brutality. And, and as a mother, um, and as a mother of color with, you know, with a son of color, you know, you think about those things and you think about, you know, wanting to raise your child to be a warrior, you know, ra raise your child to be, you know, this strong man, you know, who can face the inequalities of the world. But I think there's also like something, something you grieve about as a mom in knowing that that comes with consequences. You know that you, you never think, oh, well, standing up to a police officer might get you shot. You know, but that's something that you have to think about as a mother and um, thinking about your son. You know, going out into that world. And so I think you know my identity is something I reflect on and, and definitely shows up in, in in my poetry all the time. We know that you have a haiku stand. Can you tell us a little bit about how you developed this and maybe create a haiku for Piper Vision? Yeah, um, you know, it was so funny. I just, I got into haiku recently, you know, just in, in the spring. I always thought haiku was like, uh, like easy. <laughs> you know, I always thought it was like a cop-out type of poetry. Like three lines, who does that, right? I'm a spoken word artist. We just like go on and on and on for like pages, you know? Um, but then I tried one and I worked on it for like, like an hour, you know, perfecting these three lines, you know, I realized that there's a lot 
there's like a punch to it, you know, like that you have to put all of this um, emotion and what you want to say in only 17 syllables. So, I mean, it started when uh, on Facebook I would just have like a haiku giveaway day and I just like do a status update, like haiku for anyone who wants it, just let me know, you know, and, and like that first time I wrote like 28 haiku that day, you know, and that was pretty bomb. I really enjoyed, you know, giving those to people and, and you know, seeing, you know, how, how people appreciate that. Yeah, actually, I went to, we have a, a community art studio called The Canvas and I just walked in there one day on my lunch break and I was like, hey, you know, I have, I have a typewriter but it was an electric one. I needed to plug it in. So I needed to befriend, like, somebody in downtown Juneau. And I was like, oh, The Canvas, I feel like this would be kind of appropriate, you know, and I asked her if I could use her plug-in, <laughs> and she was like, not only did she want me to use the plug-in, but she was just totally um, supportive of the whole project, you know, and, and she was going to advertise it, you know, and do, um, do a lot of outreach on it, you know, and, and it was something that was kind of be reciprocal between me and the canvas, you know, I decided I was also going to donate part of the proceeds to the canvas, you know, because they do a lot of great work. Um, and Will you write us a poem about Pipers? About Pipers, like Piper students? Yeah. Yeah, I can write a poem about Piper students. <laughs>